Hello, hello everyone. A uh, very good afternoon to all of you. Welcome to the Officer Ada 24/7, the special session of your BRBL subject in the English medium language. So, this session is very, very much important in which we are just discussing the summary of the act and the question of your BRBL. Okay, the questions. This is very important because that question is from the your Macmillan book. and we know that in all the compulsory subject the questions always come from the notes and whatever the questions that is given in the book that will ask in the exam okay now summary of the act and the macmillan book so let's understand what is the today's topic first of all information technology is the first topic and after that we will also do the prevention of corruption act okay so class what is information technology act see I think in today's scenario, we all are depend upon the technology, right now. Uh, if you talk about the bank, so in the bank, basically, uh, if we see, then everyone, you know, just do the handwritten work, whatever the record that they have to maintain, that is in the physical form, right? But when the technology come into picture, so the bank also use that technology, and today. we all are depend upon the technology today if we want to transfer the money so i think the online media is there in which we can easily transfer our money so this it act which was enacted see what is written here the it act okay which was enacted consequent to the adoption of model law on the electronic commerce adopted by united nations so this thing you have to learn what is this it's a united nation commission on international trade law is that okay so in india the it act is taken from the united nation commission on the international trade law provide the legal infrastructure for the e-commerce now class today we are dealing with the e-commerce so this it act deal with the e-commerce in india which involve the use of alternative what is this this is the alternative okay alternative to the paper based method of communication and the storage of information facility in the electronic filling of documents of the government agency so i hope so this is clear to all of you that what actually the it act deal with okay now the section of this act is this very important in the electronic age where documents are transmitted to the electronic means to the every including the banker so knowledge of the first schedule of the act providing details of document and transaction to which this act does not apply is also very essential so i think this is the particular summary that is written in your book Okay now let's understand this question number 1 question the it act was introduced on the account of the initiative of it industry of india indian parliament reserve bank of india none of the above or united nation on this one what is the right answer tell me class what is the right answer and right now we have just discussed right now we have just discussed it tell me the right answer is united national commission on international trade law so this is the right answer next which of the following is the appellant tribunal under the it act that is very important question what is tribunal first of all c as we know that the court is there to give justice now instead of court we have a adr system that is a alternative dispute resolution so under adr what we have to do that's a full form is alternative that is dispute resolution so in india there are so many adr if i just talk about then lok adalat is there arbitration mediation negotiation 
conciliation ombudsman right it's a consumer forum then the tribunal so these are the helper of the what court so court basically the court is basically they have to follow the procedure just like the cpc crpc they are bound by the evidence but in the area they do not they do not bound by the procedure just like the court they can make their own procedure so that's why the adr system is different from the court system hmm. okay so now what is the name of appellant tribunal tell me what is the name of appellant tribunal the name of appellant tribunal is basically that is telecom dispute settlement and appellant tribunal this is the right answer many candidates will tick mark on the cyber appellant tribunal no this is not the right answer the right answer is telecom dispute settlement and appellant tribunal this is the right answer is that okay next any person right aggrieved by the order of controller suppose x is the person x have filed the case to the controller or we can say adjudicating officer okay and right t may prefer appeal so x person can file appeal first of all here and then after to the appellant tribunal right appellant tribunal within dash days from the date of which copy of order is made by controller and adjudicating suppose they have just given order on 15th of march so from 15th of march in how many days they have to file the case to the appellant tribunal that is very good question because only some questions are you know important from the examination point of view Tell me class in how many days? So in this one the right answer will be tell me tell me what is the right answer? So today we will do the two acts that is important okay. So tell me the right answer for this question in how many days? So class, the right answer is within 45 days. This is the right answer, okay? This is the right answer for this question. So I hope so. You people understand this topic, IT Act, okay? So this is very important for the examination point of view. So uh, in module C, na, all acts are not so much important. But whatever we are doing, okay, that is important for the examination point of view okay so now let's do the next one okay so let's do the next one and that is your prevention of corruption act to 1988 so please also remember the year that is given in the session okay now next prevention of corruption act so what is prevention of corruption act that is basically corruption Okay, Prevention of Corruption Act is basically we can say that here. Okay, uh, we know that corruption is basically you are doing some illegal thing. Right, so Prevention of Corruption Act was legislated in 1988 as we know that. And what is the aim of this act? The aim of this act is to combat the corruption, other misconduct, mainly in the government and the public enterprise including the public sector bank is that okay done so act define the cases which is tried c class for the corruption wrongful act corruption is a wrongful act so that is handled by the special judge 
and the special judge is also appointed by the session court c class in all over the world there are only two types of cases the first case is your civil cases and the second is your criminal cases if you talk about the civil cases so that is basically done between the x and y person and the criminal cases that is one party is state and another party is a accused person right so x person is called in the civil cases that is called plaintiff and y is called defendant who will defend himself state is the prosecutor and this d is called defendant that is a criminal case so in the criminal case right the lower court is called session court and in the civil cases the lower court is called district court so in the criminal session court is there in the session court session judge will sit so this special judge which is appointed under the prevention of corruption act is taken from the session court so special judge is appointed by the government the minimum qualification of these judges are also stipulated the statute also enumerates the maximum punishment which may be for different types of penalty prescribe the designation and the level of police officer who are authorized to investigate this misconduct and arrest alish culprit after obtaining the prior approval whatever required that is so simple okay standard operating instruction have been issued by the government of india with a view to achieving the uniform and effective implementation for prior approval process this one and one thing you have to remember the high court right the high court are empowered to consider the appeal and revise judgment decreed by the special judges so this is the right answer this is the right answer for this question okay let's do the question okay number one question the prevention of corruption act required that offense should be tried by supreme court judges district court judges special judges or high court judges what is the right answer that is very good question that is very good question tell me class yes class what is the right answer right now we have just discussed right now we have just discussed <coughs> the right answer is special judge is the right answer that we have discussed okay next what is the latest period by which the trial under prevention of corruption has to be concluded in all the respect bataiye yes what will be the right answer what will be the right answer for this question latest period by which the trial under the prevention of corruption is to be concluded so for this thing the right answer is 2 4 year okay 2 year minimum they have to solve the matter up to 4 year okay this is the right answer next transfer of suit under prevention of corruption act may not all be transferred from one court to another that is true and false tell me the transfer of suit under the prevention of corruption act may not at all be transferred from one court to another that is true and false tell me and we have just discussed this topic in the prevention of corruption act that the cases can be transferred to the high court and to the other court also so may not be transferred from one court to another this is absolutely false okay this is absolutely false 
नेक्स्ट वॉट इज द मैक्सिमम पीरियड ऑफ पनिशमेंट ओके बाय इम्प्रिजनमेंट विच मे बी मेडिड आउट फॉर द अबेटमेंट ऑफ द ऑफेंस अंडर द प्रिवेंशन ऑफ करप्शन एक्ट दिस इज फाइव एट टेन एंड सेवन ईयर वॉट इज द राइट आंसर so what is the maximum period of punishment by imprisonment which may be meted out the abatement abatement means to instigate someone right so the maximum punishment is this one okay 3 year is the minimum punishment up to 7 year is the maximum punishment so you have to tick mark on the 7 year okay in the page class also we have just read about the particular chart in which the minimum and the maximum punishment is given okay next one in the metropolitan areas that is notified under subsection 1 of section 8 of the crpc of the crpc no police officer below which rank is authorized to investigate the offence under the prevention of corruption act that is inspector of police deputy inspector general of police assistant commissioner of police or commissioner of police so in the prevention of corruption act this topic is important that in delhi who is the authority in uh, metropolitan areas and in elsewhere so three area is there in which the police will be the different uh, different rank of police will just handle the matter okay so what is the right answer so the right answer will be c assistant commissioner of police is the right answer so guys today we have done two act that is very good evening to all of you welcome to the officer adda 247 the special session of your brbl subject in the english medium language so you can see that here we are doing the macmillan important question and also we are doing the summary of the act which is very important for the examination point of view we you we know that your cab exam is going to be held at july 2024 so that's why the session is very very much important okay now let's start with the session see summary of the act and the macmillan most important questions here see now today we are going to start llp so what exactly llp first of all we have to understand this one llp is the llp if the partners will be dead then the partners then the llp will be continue okay an existence separate from the partner it means the company have a separate the company have a separate legal existence and the member have a separate legal existence is that okay so you can say here perpetual succession and separate from the partners that is important okay then any individual or body corporate may be the partner in llp so the person who work in the llp that is called the partner they provided they are competent to the contract every llp shall have at least two designated partners who are the individual it means in llp minimum two partners and the maximum unlimited and if you talk about the designated partners so minimum two designated partners will be there so this is very very much important see is that okay okay so now let's start with the this one every designated partner of llp shall obtain the designated partner identification number the designated partner is responsible for doing all the act matter and the things as are required to be done by the llp llp is incorporated once it is registered with the registrar it means the registration is class compulsory for the llp okay and there should be the name of llp on registration the llp may by name capable of suing and being sued so we know that if a llp is registered just like the company 
because that is compulsory. So the LLP can be file the case and person can also file the case on the LLP. The mutual right and duties of partner of LLP and the mutual right and duties of LLP and its partner are governed by the LLP agreement. Class again, this point is important, LLP agreement. So we know that in company, memorandum of association and article of association is important in a company, right? In a LLP, LLP agreement is important. LLP agreement is important, right? And in the partnership, the partnership deed is important. Partnership deed is important. So this is the important line for this one, okay? And it must be filed with the registrar. The rules regarding different conversion is provided in chapter 10, section section 55 to 54. Okay, so this is also very much important. The different conversion defined in chapter 10 of section 55 to 58 of the LLP, which is deal with this one. Okay, so we know that if any partnership firm want to convert into LLP, if any private company, if, it, if any public company want to convert into LLP, so this chapter is there. Is that okay? So, and for account and this one annual returns, they have to maintain the books of account, other records and audit auditing standard and annual returns and they have to submit it to the what registrar. So class, this is all about your LLP. So we know that C class in LLP, there should be the minimum two members, two partners. Suppose if one partner is removed or gone. So one partner, the remaining one partner have authority to do the business, but the liability will be imposed on the partner. So in LLP, if one partner have done the wrongful act, for that wrongful act, the other partner will not liable because in LLP, the partners have a mutual agency with the, uh, this one, LLP, not with the, this one partners. So this is important point for this one. Now let's do the question for this question. Number one question. Number one question on the screen is that, the advantage of which forms of business organization is incorporated in LLP Act 2008? Private limited company and public limited company, sole proprietorship firm and partnership firm, partnership firm and private limited company and all business organization. What is the right answer? The advantage of which, okay, the advantage of which the form and the business organization is incorporated under LLP. So, the right answer is class, the partnership firm and the private limited company. This is the right answer. Okay, next, true and false. LLP has a perpetual succession. Say yes or no. LLP have a perpetual succession. Perpetual means, suppose if the partner is dead, insolvent, right? The partnership will be go as it is. The partnership of LLP will be go as it is. So, this is absolutely right answer. The minimum number of designated partner is 5. Minimum. The minimum number cannot be 5. It is 2. So this is your false statement. Under LLP Act, the term resident of India means a person who has stayed in India for a period not less than 182 days during the immediately preceding one year. That is true and false. See, that is important one. Resident in India. This question is of your definition term. Who is resident in India? So class, the resident in India who live in India not less than 182 days. That's it. Individual shall not become a designated partners in LLP unless he has given the prior consent. It means if any partner want to become the 
designated he have to give the prior consent llp may appoint a designated partner within 15 days of the vacancy arising for any reason so llp may appoint designated partner because that is compulsory because whatever the legal compliance is there that should be done by this designated partners so within 15 days we have to appoint this one that is important okay so for c1 that is true this is absolutely true okay and this e1 is false and individual shall not become designated partner in LP unless he have given the prior concern that thing is prior concern that is true okay class so this is your particular statement please read all the points that is very very much important that is very very much important class see Is that okay class so I hope so this is clear to all of you now the next one now we are going to start understand the company act okay company act 2013 see so the company first of all in the company act what we have to study we have to study the features of company we have to study the types of company director prospectus winding up process etc so these are the things which is included in the company act now company that is a artificial legal person which is created by law and can be dissolved by law so we know that that is an artificial legal person it is invisible intangible exist only in the eye of law because we know that the company have a separate legal existence from its partner a company can enter into contract in its own name right because company have a separate legal existence it can acquire disposed property can be fined under the provision for the law if they violate the law that is so simple it is a distinct entity from the member since a company is a distinct legal person it have own signature common seal and after 2015 common seal is not important Consequently, it also different from the partnership firm in the number of ways. It means the company is separate and the partnership firm is a separate thing. Is that okay? Next. There are various type of company and these may be classified in the various way which include on the basis of mode of incorporation, liability on the basis of public interest, holding and subsidiary company. So there are so many types of company. If I just say you chartered company, statutory company, registered company, foreign company, Indian company, public company, private company, holding company, subsidiary company, associate company. So there are so many types of company that is written in the book. The memorandum of association and article of association, C class, this is the important document of the company. In LLP, LLP agreement is important document. In partnership, partnership deed is important document and in MO and AOA, okay, these are the basic documents required by company prior to its incorporation have to be registered with the registrar of company. That's it. MOA give basic detail of company, its objective and the most important document of the company. We know MOA is a very important document. The AOA on other hand, which is the second most important document. So AOA is also the public document that is the most important document. It consists the rules, regulations, bylaws made by the company for internal management and for carrying the objective of the company embodied by this one. So guys, this is important one. Please see this particular type. Please read this statement.
Is that okay? Okay, now I think this is clear to all of you. Now, let's do the next one. Okay, let's do the next important point of the Company Act. Both MO and AOA has to be normally filed with the registrar of company before registration of the company. Once registered, the effect of registration is that MOA AOA bind the company to absorb all the provision of the memorandum and the articles. That's it. Now, there are three doctrines which is important for the examination point of view. Three doctrines. The first is Doctrine of ultravirus, doctrine of constructive notice, and doctrine of indoor management. Now, see what is ultravirus. Ultravirus means beyond the power, it means the company cannot carry on the subject not permitted by its memorandum of association. That is called ultravirus. Constructive notice every outsider is assumed to have read the memorandum of association and article of association. If you have not read, if the outsider have not read, the company is not liable. And what is indoor management? Indoor management is basically, see, what is written here? Indoor management, lay down that, the outsider are not required to see compliance of internal regulations of the company. It means, if a company have made any change in the internal rules and regulations, that thing company have to inform to the outsider. If they not inform, outsider are not liable. Okay, outsider are not liable. So this is the important doctrines that we have read. Now, member is also a chapter. Now see what is written in the member. Member defined in section 255 of Company Act. Any person competent to contract can become member of the company. There are various modes by which the person and entity can acquire membership. There are also circumstances by which membership in a company ceases. Ceases means to end. Every company is required by statute to keep updated register of members, debenture holders, containing certain minimum information as specified. That is important. The register are to be kept at the register office of the company and is open for inspection by the general public. The Company Act confers certain rights to the member such as statutory, documentary, property right. Statutory rights, the rights which is mentioned in the Act. Documentary, which is mentioned in the document, that is MO and AOA. And, pro and property rights, that is in the journal definition. Is that okay? Next. The public company has to issue the prospectus before raising funds from the public. The company, the promoter, the director have certain liabilities for any wrongful statement that may be included in the prospectus on the basis of which public invest fund. So that's why if a company is showing the prospectus, they have to show 100% exact information because of that prospectus, the third party is investing. Misstatement in the prospectus will attract you the civil and criminal liability. <coughs> that is important. Is that okay? The management of the company is with the board of director elected by the member of the company. A company have maximum number of 15 directors. A company may appoint more than 15 after passing a special resolution. That is important. If we talk about private company to 200. If we talk about public company, that is 7 unlimited. One person company, 1 and 1. Director to 15. Public 3, 15. One person, 1, 15. So these are the directors. 
and these are the members okay these are the members that is important now every listed public company shall have at least one third of the total number of directors are independent director the central government may prescribe the minimum number of independent director in the case any class and class of public company the methodology to be adopted for appointment of director in the rules are discussed in this unit other provision of company act as regard the holding of qualification shares by director maximum number of directorship in which person may be hold that is a 20 and related party transaction and loan to the director so there are so many things that is mentioned in the company act also about the member directors okay so these are the content which is provided in the company act so in module d this is the last text tomorrow we will do all the questions so that's why please do not forget to see the session hello everyone a uh, very good afternoon to all of you welcome to the officer adda channel of adda 24 7 a uh, very good afternoon to all of you so guys we are doing the summary of the act and the question so today we have to do a last act of module d which is very important for the examination point of view right so the act is basically company act yesterday we have just done with the every act yesterday we have just done every act rules and regulations okay now let's start with the question and answer so yesterday we have done the definition of company the various types of company what is memorandum of association what is article of association doctrine of ultra virus constructive notice what is endowed management about member prospectors board of directors etc okay now let's do the question number one question directors are the actual owner of a company a very good question is there okay and you have to give me the answer come on class what is the right answer for this question what is the right answer for this question yes a very simple question directors are the real owner of the company the answer is absolutely not okay this is absolutely not because directors are the only member that basically direct the members of the company just give the direction the main management is you know handled by the director so this is false statement okay next a company has to be compulsory registered under the company act 2013 tell me the company has to be compulsory registered under the company act 2013 the statement is absolutely true because now because company always have to be registered before 1956 act was there but now 2013 act is there okay now a company cannot enter into contract in its own name tell me a company what is the question a company cannot enter into the contract in its own name C class we know that the company have a separate legal existence and the member have a separate legal existence so that's why this line the company cannot enter into contract that is totally false because we know that the company have a separate legal existence so that's why the company can do contract in its own name if all member of a company die then the company wind company will dissolve do not forget to like the session share the session yes class if all the member of company die then the company would be wound up dissolve the answer is totally false 
no okay the answer is no now a company is a legal person having the perpetual succession perpetual succession means basically it will be go as it is so company is a legal person with a perpetual succession the answer is yes okay that is the true statement that is a true statement of this question okay done next uh true and false a company of a in a case company limited by share the creditor of the company can recover the money from the member if a company is not making profit in a case of a company that is limited by share the creditor of a company can recover the money from the member if a company is not making profit what is true and what is false tell me <coughs> हाँ जी डी आंसर विल बी व्हाट इज़ द राइट आंसर बिकॉज़ दिस इज़ वेरी वेरी गुड क्वेश्चन दिस इज़ वेरी गुड क्वेश्चन ऑफ़ योर कंपनी एक्ट इन द केस ऑफ़ कंपनी वी नो द टाइप्स ऑफ़ कंपनी ना सो दिस कंपनी इज़ कंपनी लिमिटेड बाय शेयर्स राइट so if a case of company limited by share the creditor of the company can recover money from the member if a company is not making profit so for the first one this is totally false they cannot make lose this a member cannot transfer share in public company without the consent of other member that is required class suppose if we want to transfer the share so we need the consent of other member so in the B point, the member cannot share in a public company without consent of other member. That is totally what? False. No need to consent the other member. Okay. A prospectus is generally issued by a public limited company. A prospectus is generally issued by the public limited company. The answer is totally true. Yes, because prospectus is basically the guidelines. Okay, prospectus is basically the guidelines that the public company have to show. It is not compulsory for the private limited company. So this is the right statement. Okay, now fill in the blanks. The minimum number of member required in a private company. Minimum. So minimum should be two. This is the right answer. Minimum number of member in a public company. So in a public company, the minimum should be seven. Maximum number of member in a private company. The maximum can be two hundred. A very simple question and a quick revision is going on of your session. Quick revision. Is that okay? So we have to learn. This is two. This is seven. This is two hundred. Okay, next. The maximum number of a member in a public company. Maximum. So, what should be the maximum? What should be the maximum class? Tell me. The maximum should be, that is, any number. This is the right answer. Okay. A private company should have a minimum paid of capital rupees what? The private company minimum paid up capital and same question if a public company what is a minimum paid of capital rupees that is important one that is important one yes minimum and minimum in the private and max uh, minimum in the public so guys for this one the right answer will be this is any number for the private, this is no minimum requirement. 
and public no minimum requirement this is the right answer in a government company the government hold at least dash percentage of the paid up capital what is the right answer the right answer is 51 percent so this is the right answer i hope so you people understand the questions okay so this is all for your second chapter we have finished in the way of question and answers okay now let's do the next one let's do the next one next in the case of conflict between the memorandum of association and article of association the article of association will prevail <coughs> tell me class in the case of conflict between the memorandum of association is a very important document article of association is a document which talks about the internal rules and regulation so if there is a conflict between these two the article of association will prevail the answer is false okay one of the clause contained in memorandum of association is called object clause So class, we know that name clause, capital clause, object clause, register clause, association clause, we call it subscription clause also. Okay, and then name, capital, object, register. Okay, so these are the clauses which is mentioned. So object clause is also one of the clause. Okay, and liability clause. The memorandum and article once registered bind the firm. The memorandum and article once registered bind the firm. That is true. that is also true okay this is the right answer now next so in this part the questions are there regarding ultravirus constructive notice indoor management okay the first question is doctrine of ultravirus lay down that every outsider is assumed to have read the memorandum of association and article of association that is a true statement Hanji class what is ultravirus ultravirus is basically if a company go beyond the power so this is false statement no company have to do work that is beyond the power okay now doctrine of constructive notice doctrine of now the constructive notice outsider are not required to see the compliance of internal regulation of the company constructive notice we know suppose if the outsider want to invest in a company company will give memorandum of association article of association x person read them and not it will be presumed that X person have read everything. This is called constructive notice. So this statement is totally false. Doctrine of indoor management lay down that the company cannot carry on the object not permitted by its memorandum of association. So indoor management, same example, if a company have changed something in MO and AOA, right? If they change something, so that change 
it's a company duty to inform the investor if the company have not informed the company is liable so this statement is also false statement this statement is also the false statement so this is right answer is that okay now next one a minor can be the member of a private company but not of a public company tell me a minor can be the member of a private company but not for the public company this is totally false a member can inspect the register of member a member can inspect the register of member the answer is true in a company limited by share the member is liable to pay the full nominal value of share the liability of member ends there anji class if a company is limited by share right the member is liable to pay the full nominal value of the share and the liability of the member ends here that is true a company is required to keep its foreign register in india only a company is required to keep its foreign register in india only that is false okay so this is the right statement now there is no remedy available for the misstatement in prospectus by the directors suppose if there is a misstatement done in the prospectus so there is no remedy the answer is false there is a civil liability and the criminal liability that is false a company proposing to issue red herring prospectus shall file its with registrar at least 3 days prior to the opening of subscription list and the offer that is true okay that is true statement next one what is the maximum number of director in a private company maximum class so the maximum number of director in a private company <coughs> 15 maximum number of director in a public company also 15 minimum number of director in a public company minimum 3 minimum in private 2 at least that's of the total number of director of a public company are to be person whose office <coughs> period of office is liable by the determination by whose retirement by rotation tell me class at least that is 2 by 3 of the total number of director of a public company are to be person whose period of office is liable to the determination retirement by the rotation okay every public company or a private company which is subsidiary of a public having paid up share capital rupees dash must have managing the whole time director or manager f that is nil no one additional director are appointed by additional directors are appointed by board of directors please keep remember these things alternate directors are appointed by alternate so alternate also class that is appointed by the board of directors done okay casual vacancy in the board of directors is filled by what casual vacancy so class the casual vacancy in the board of director is filled by again the board of director so this is the right answer 
so class we have finished the questions of your company act and i hope so you people enjoy the questions because these questions are very very much important for the examination point of view is that okay so please keep revise so today we have just finished the module d hello everyone a very warm welcome to the officer adda 24 7 channel of adda 24 7 so myself advocate nikita singh i'm your legal mentor of brbl subject of the cib exam that is going to be held at july 2024 so if, first of all if you are new in this session do not forget to subscribe the channel of officer adda okay and whatever we are teaching in the youtube session that is very very much important for the examination point of view okay so we have done with module d right and now the summary of the act and the Macmillan most important questions of module C. Let's start with the session. Number one, the Banker's Book Evidence Act. So today we are going to start this act that is a Banker's Book Evidence Act. So first of all, we have to understand what exactly this act means and then after we will do the questions. So the Banker Book Evidence Act is basically what record the bank have to present in front of the court we know that in india we have a court right in india we have a court and we have a different adr types so what are the adr types the adr type is basically that is conciliation mediation that is lok adalat ombudsman consumer forum etc so these are the examples of alternate dispute resolution and this is the code so in front of the code the bank have to present the evidence so the banker books evidence that is basically that one so section 2 of the banker book evidence defines the main term pertaining to the statute and that have been covered in this unit when the books of bank are produced in the printout form it is to be accompanied by the certificate as detailed in section 2a c if a bank is presenting anything in front of the court right so in that case the bank have to not present the original document the bank have to present the certified document okay similarly any record of the bank required by the court to be a complied by certificate as brought out in the statute when the data is stored in the computer form a certificate from the person in charge of the computer system is required that is very important okay if any data that is stored in the computer form so the certificate from the person in charge of the computer system is required so that is important is that okay now in any proceeding where bank is not a party so if bank is not a party and the certified copy are produced the bank officer cannot be compelled to present as a witness okay that's it court can order inspection of books of the accounts the order of inspection of books must given three clear days that is also very much important three clear days and the court has discretion to award the cost for any application under this act okay so this is important one for the bankers book evidence act okay now let's do the question because that's all for the bankers book evidence act the first question on the screen is that as per the bankers book evidence act what do you mean by the term judge what do you mean by the term judge c class the definition portion is very important when we finish the summary session then we will start the definition term so as per the bankers book evidence act judge means what the judge of a district court the first class magistrate the judge of the supreme court and judge of a high court what is the right answer So here the right answer will be judge of the high court. This is the right answer. Okay. 
D point is the right answer for this question. Done? Right now, this act is not so much important, but still, suppose if any case, just come in front of the court, so what will be the consequence? So we have to prepare by itself. Now, next question. Which of the following person are not authorized to issue a certificate under Section 2A of the Banker's Book Evidence Act? Manager, Principal Accountant, Person in Charge of the Computer System and none of the above. Tell me. Which are not authorized to issue the certificate under Section 2A of the Banker's Book Evidence Act? That is very important question. That is very, very much important question. What is the right answer? So, for this question, the right answer will be manager that sign signature is required or principal accountant signature is required or the person in charge of the computer system signature is required. So, that's why none of the above because all the person signature is required. So, there is an option between manager and principal accountant and person in charge is compulsory. So, that's why D will be the right answer. Is that okay? D will be the right answer. Next. A court might order a bank to prepare and produce copies of entry relevant to the matter in issue accompanied by the certificate that no other entry are to be found in the book. Such order has to be served within how many clear days before the same is of it? 3, 5, 4 and 7. What is the right answer? It's a 3, 5, 4 and 7. What is the right answer? Tell me, class. What is the right answer for this question? That is very important. So for this one, the right answer will be three clear days. This is the right answer. Any order made under the act for the payment of cost and by a bank may be enforced as if bank were part of the proceeding. That is true and false. Any order made under the act for the payment of cost to and by a bank may be enforced as if the bank were a party to the proceeding. That is true or false. Tell me. That is true and false. Which of the following is the right answer? That is good question. That is good question. Tell me. What will be the right answer for this question? Yes, class. So class for this one, the right answer will be, that is true because bank is a party. So that's why this is a true statement. Okay, next. Okay, now 
the different act that is the Legal Service Authority Act 1987. This is very important because in the Legal Service Act we have to study only one concept that is Lok Adalat. Okay, this is Lok Adalat we have to study. So guys, Lok Adalat is organized under the Legal Service Authority Act 1987. Done? So one question can be asked that from which act the Lok Adalat has been taken. So the Legal Service Authority Act 1987. Lok Adalat are organized for an area usually consists of the serving and retired judicial officer and other person specified by the state authority, district authority, Supreme Court Legal Service Committee, High Court Legal Service Committee and Taluk Legal Service Committee. So this is first, second, third, fourth, fifth. Okay. So these are the five particular organizations which have a right to establish the Lok Adalat. Lok Adalat are intent to bring about compromise and settlement in respect of this one. C class. If we talk about the court, so court is basically to give justice. But if we talk about this one, so Lok Adalat, the basic purpose of Lok Adalat is to compromise the matter and settlement of the matter. So this is the basic purpose of Lok Adalat. Lok Adalat okay so one two this is three this is four this is five okay and serving and retired judge will be the particular officer and other person also and other person also because that is very important serving and retired judicial officer and other person that will be the this one now Lok Adalat derived jurisdiction by consent of the party and application made to the court by one of the party to the dispute and the court is satisfied that dispute is between settled by Lok Adalat. It means if we talk about the jurisdiction, so the consent of the party, application will be made to the court by one of the party. It means there are so many ways in which the Lok Adalat can handle the matter. Is it okay? In respect of the potential dispute, any party may request authority and committee organizing Lok Adalat to refer the dispute for the determination. Lok Adalat should be guided by the principle of justice, equity, fair play and other legal principle. In the case of settlement, a word shall be binding on the party to the dispute and no appeal shall lie in any court against the award. That is important. Is that okay? This is important one. If no settlement, right, if no settlement is happened in the Lok Adalat, the case will be back to the court which refer the matter to Lok Adalat. In the case of potential court case, <coughs> if a matter is not settled, Lok Adalat shall advise a party to seek remedy in the court. Every Lok Adalat, right, has a power to specify its own procedure. It means Lok Adalat can make their own procedure. Presently, the monetary ceiling of amount for settlement of Lok Adalat is 20 lakh. So up to 20 lakh, the matter can be easily solved by the Lok Adalat. The main advantage of bank financial institution in the using forum of Lok Adalat is settlement of their NPA by compromise. That is a non-performing asset by compromise. So this is the basic theme of the Lok Adalat. So we know that we have a court, but still, if we go to the Lok Adalat Ombudsman arbitration, conciliation, mediation, so the justice will be given as soon as possible. Okay, so this is the important term. Now, let's do the question. Lok Adalat is organized under the Lok Adalat Act. Tell me yes or no. That is very good question. That is very good question. Tell me.
what is the right answer so for this one this is totally wrong because lok adalat is organized under the lok legal service authority act 1987 lok adalat is organized to settle only the dispute between the party existing dispute between the party that is true and false that is true and false tell me that is true and false tell me so for this one the answer is totally false okay the answer is totally false okay now if one party intend to refer the dispute to the lok adalat the consent of other is not required the consent of other is not required tell me yes or no if other party intend to refer the dispute to the lok adalat the consent of other is not required this is totally false lok adalat shall strive at arriving at a compromise or settlement between the party tell me settlement and compromise between the party that is true there shall be no appeal against the award that is given by lok adalat and this can be also come in the form of question that if a justice is given by lok adalat what it call it is called award okay so no appeal against the order of lok adalat that is true and false tell me